Hi, my name is Angela Stedron, Chief Enabler. I'm going to be talking with Prosper Taravunga on the Live Long Prosperity Show about my mission, how to help one million women achieve financial freedom by 2050. I look forward to having you there. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the Chief Enabler herself. Angela. Angela, how are you doing, my love? Hey, Prosper. It's so nice to be here with you today. What a great welcome. Fantastic. Now, Angela is a woman on a mission. She's dedicated to helping one million women achieve financial freedom by the year 2030. We're going to be hearing all about that. But if you're a lady that has... Um, a business and, um, you know, you're trying to make it uh, grow or you're trying to scale yourself. Have you ever found yourself thinking, I'm tired of working so hard without so much to show for it. And, you know, your idea or your product or your service is pretty damn good, but you're actually stuck as to how you're going to be growing your business. Angela is here to help you. Her work is dedicated to help you create and build a business and life that you actually love by providing you with the tools, resources, and coaching so that you can become who you were meant to be and make the impact on the world like she's about to do by empowering and um, helping one million women um, achieve this financial freedom. Now, Angela, this is a big why that um, you know really comes from you. How does it all emanate and um, how do you plan to achieve this? Well, I grew up in Africa um, and I've seen firsthand some of the struggles that women have there raising kids on their own. The thing that happened to me at 20 that really shaped my life was the fact that I had a son and I lost his dad. So I found myself completely alone at 20 with a six month old halfway through a degree. Um, living in South Africa at that point actually was quite frightening, particularly if you've lost someone to violence. So I decided at that point it was time to leave and move to a new country. So I came to Australia. I remember at that point earning something like $2,800 and childcare cost me a thousand alone. So it was a real financial struggle. And I really understand the financial struggles that mothers go through because I've done this for the last 22, 23 years. And I also understand the sacrifices that mothers make. Uh, as I said to you before, I think one in three women in the Western world over the age of 45 actually lives in poverty. So a little bit more about my story. I put myself through a master's degree about 15 years ago, and that certainly helped me earn a lot more. I got a, jo a good job, and I thought, right, this is it. You know, this is stability for me. But just after the financial crisis, I got retrenched. And I realized at that point that there was no safety in a job. Plus, there is also a need for two incomes. I was never, ever going to rely on one income again. So I started my first online business, which is very successful today. Um, we retail in women's accessories. But I still didn't have the courage to actually leave working for someone because, again, there was always this issue of security around that. But fortunately, two years ago, I managed to organize a retrenchment package. My son was 23 at the time, so um, I've gotten him through. He had some issues when he was little with deafness. He's had his operation, but he needed years of remedial therapy and private schooling. So I've got him through all of that. And I'm at the point now where I'm lucky enough to be able to, to do what I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about helping women because I've seen how they struggle. I personally know how women struggle to raise their children. And I also understand that we make a lot of sacrifices for the people we love, but most women actually don't look after themselves. And that's why they end up living in a caravan eating cornflakes at 55. So what I want to do is I want to help women who have the courage to run a business and own a business to make that business even better, to give them the lifestyle that they want and that they deserve as well. What happens is a lot of people, not just women, start a business because they're very good at what they do and people love their product, but they don't necessarily have the skills, both emotionally and technically, to actually run a business and take it to the next level. So what I now do is I take my experience from corporate working and strategy development, as well as my experience as a management consultant, and I've combined that into 
something that will help people take their business to the next level in terms of growing their skill from being a business owner to a leader, as well as the technical skills to actually systemize a business. Now, systemization is a bit of a scary word to a lot of people, but what it essentially is, is to learn how to assess your market, design your priorities for the next 90 days, and execute the hell out of them so that you achieve your goals. So in a nutshell, I help you really gain clarity on what you need to do. I help you work out what you need to focus on, what your priorities are, and then how to do it and how to do it relentlessly so that every 90 days you're really nailing those priorities to actually move towards your goal. Absolutely. That is such a big why and a big goal that it would scare such a small mind, um, you know, just, you know, thinking how you're going to go about it and how you're going to help these 1 million uh, women. Now, obviously, um, as business people, and if you're watching this show right now, I would like to welcome you and thank you so much for uh, tuning in because at the end of the day, we're here to leave, we're here to learn, and we're here to contribute. And that's what Angela is doing. And she's going to be doing that um, with the 1 million women that she wants to help by 20. 30 right there and as i started the show i would have mentioned that a lot of us are finding ourselves um you know tired of working so hard in our businesses and having nothing to show for it and that's the reason why um you know angela is willing to help us out to systemize our business um so that it becomes profitable and enjoyable now angela you would actually notice that when people are starting off in their business, um, you know, they, they, they do it all. You know, they want to be um, the, the manager. They want to be the janitor. They want to be the CEO. They want to be the accountant. They want to be um, the person who's writing the hilarious Facebook post. And they want to be the model in the photos, in the Instagram um, photos as well, especially if it's, it's women that are in a business. Now, half of the time is really hard to let go. How do you help people yeah. to actually, uh, you know, open up to say, you know what, I'll let systems, um, you know, work for me so that I have a business that works without me. Look, there is, and, and this is not just people who run their own business. Mm. I find this issue even in corporate where you have leaders who don't necessarily have the emotional maturity to delegate. And it really comes down to delegation. But what I do in terms of, of um, what you just asked me is we create 90 day what I call scorecards. So it's a plan on a page and it's broken down into marketplace, workplace and people. And that means what are my priorities for my market, my, the, the, the customers I serve? What are my priorities in terms of the way we work? And what are my priorities in terms of my people? And these are priorities and then measures and targets. So you can track these every single week and you should track them every single week because what gets tracked gets measured, right? Now, when you bring people on board, what happens is that most leaders hate managing. In fact, it's probably the number one issue that a lot of business owners have. However, what we do with a scorecard is we take this and we sit down with our people and we work through each of the priorities and help them understand what their role is in achieving it. And just by having those conversations, you'll find that people actually will agree. Once they understand where their business is going, they generally are quite happy to commit and agree to those goals as well. So what that means is that it's much easier to track and monitor and manage them too, because everybody understands why the business needs to be moving in a certain direction and what needs to be done and then what happens is that they commit to it and you can track it every week. So it gives you a lot of confidence in that. What it means is that you actually have a way of tracking and monitoring. And particularly initially, if you're very nervous about relinquishing control, even if you're outsourcing or you're using a virtual assistant, if they aren't meeting their targets weekly, then you can have those conversations with them because and you can correct it easily so you do actually still maintain an element of control and i find with a lot of people that gives them a lot more confidence that they are encouraged to actually delegate but i remember i had a client in the states and what happened with her is in america people still write checks and what she did is she provided computer software and hardware to educational institutions but she was having an issue with cash flow 
And the accountant said to her, look, we're not going to make it beyond the next 90 days unless something significant changes. So what we did is we took the scorecard and we worked out that her big three priorities, her three big rocks for the next 90 days, one of them was to get cash in the bank as soon as possible. And she literally sat down with every staff member with this scorecard and worked through it for them about what they needed to do to get this done. And one person that she actually sat with was the receptionist. And the receptionist at the time said to her, well, I mean, I'm the receptionist. I answer the phone. What, what on earth can I contribute to this? But the receptionist was also the person who opened the mail. And the checks came in the mail, right? So if a check got banked by 3 p.m., that money was in the bank for the day. And this receptionist, her whole purpose for the next three months was to make sure that those checks got banked. And I remember my client rang me and she said, oh my goodness, the receptionist this morning started screaming. I didn't know what was going on. And it's because she opened this huge check in the, that came in the mail and she was so excited. You know, I've got one, I've got one. So somebody else said, I'll man the desk, you run down to the bank and she got the check into the bank that way. But it's a really great story about how once your staff know what they need to do and that they are part of something because people want to feel like they're part of something, your business is going to flourish. And this is where it's so important to have these conversations, but also as a leader to make people understand why you're going in a certain direction. I find a lot of business owners it is their baby and I understand it completely. And it does take them a long time to actually relinquish that control because it is your baby. And actually it's one of the reasons why CEOs sometimes are not always the business founders. Sometimes there comes a point where you have to step down in the business. Naomi Simpson from Red Balloon did that extremely well. She understood as well that there was a point where she had to let go of her baby. But before you get to that point, you do need to make that leap from, I have to do everything because it's mine to actually delegating it down. And it's also about having the skills from a system perspective, but also from a, a leadership and a growth perspective to say, I'm actually hiring the right people. I'm doing the right thing. I'm helping them understand what they need to do and they can go and do it. And I can monitor and track that. And if it doesn't work, then we can have that conversation as well. But again, this is not skill that every business owner is born with. And, my role is to help them understand that, but to give them the tools where they can do that. But then they can also replicate their knowledge and help their people um, understand that and grow their business. Because what happens as well, and most business owners don't realize this, is if you are the business, your business has no value. You can never sell it. If you go on holiday, you press the pause button on your business and your income stops. What you need to create, even if you never want to sell your business, is an exit strategy. So you have to take your knowledge that's in your head and you have to make sure that that business can run without you because that's where the value comes in. And that's the big secret to really having the lifestyle that you want. Absolutely, you should still track and monitor it, but you don't want to be the one doing everything because you will never, ever be free. And to be frank, it's why most businesses, 95% of businesses fail because business owners never make that shift. Absolutely. I, I, I love that sentiment um, that if you cannot either replicate yourself within the business, then it's a glorified job. Um, which, is. Is, which is basically what you were saying out there. Now, like you were saying, you know, a business is a commercial profitable enterprise that has to work without you. As you would notice that a lot of people, um, you know, that are going into this whole business venture, they have great technical skills, but that does not mean they know how to uh, run a business. And you, and like you said, four out of five uh, small businesses never make it past the five year mark we know, which is a very depressing uh, statistic. Now, is it that being, you know, uh, well-versed with the technical skill does not mean you are actually able to run a business? Is that what you're saying there? It, absolutely, you're correct. So you need to have the technical skills because it's the foundation. It's basically your ticket to entry. 
But if you don't have the leadership skills, you will not flourish as a business. You will not flourish as a leader. But it's worth me just stopping and saying what I mean by leadership because it's one of these words that gets thrown around in business and actually ends up meaning absolutely nothing. So for me, leadership is about influencing with integrity, both yourself and others. But there's four areas of it. So it's the ability to manage change effectively. It's the ability to develop yourself and others. And that's both in terms of coaching, in terms of your technical skills, mindset, all of those things. It's also about being able to motivate. Um, and that's very important too. So it's about getting people excited about your business's vision. Um, and a person that was very, very good at that, for example, was Steve Jobs. As a leader, and in terms of the way he treated people, if you look at the stories, he was pretty crappy at it. Uh, Elon Musk is another one who has terrible people skills, but they have the incredible, they had the incredible ability to really get people excited about their vision. And because people got excited about their vision and they shared their vision, they followed. And this was their real strength as well. So there are certain things you can learn and you can do. It's not necessarily something that you're born with. You don't have to be born with leadership skills. Nobody really is, but it's something you can develop as well. A lot of it does come from understanding yourself. So I will always encourage a business owner to go and do some sort of profile, whether it's a Myers-Briggs or it's a DISC, it doesn't matter. The point is what it helps you understand is it helps you understand yourself and how you react to certain situations but it also helps you understand how other people react and perceive certain situations. So for example, there are certain people who are what I call drivers. They only make decisions based on logic and they're very, very direct in the way they deliver things. Now that's a very simplified explanation of this, but in effect, they just want results. And when you're trying to convince them, you need to show them what the outcome is going to be and, and that they're going to get the outcome that they want. If you contrast that to somebody who is what I call an analytical, they're more interested in the process. You might say to them, this is the end result, but they need to understand every single step of the way. If you've got somebody who's more of an amiable, they are interested in the people side of things. So you can tell them about the results till you go blue in the face, but if you don't tell them how the people are going to be affected and the benefits to people, they aren't going to actually respond and come along on the journey with you. So the first step, as I said, is to really get a good understanding of yourself. And I would encourage people to go and do one of these. You can do them for free at 16personalities.com. It's not cast in stone. Not everybody is in a box. But if you use the tool to help you understand yourself and others, it is very useful. And often when I've taken people through this, they get these aha moments. I had one woman that I coached recently. Um, she didn't own her own business, but she worked for somebody in a contract role. And she said to me, she just had endless issues with her boss. And I took her through this profile. I have a very simplified version that I call social styles. And she, the light bulbs went on. She suddenly went, oh my goodness, I completely understand why I'm having these issues because her and her boss were diametrically opposed. So you do need to develop your people skills because running a business is not just about the technical side and, and um, having that knowledge. You must have it because, as I said, it's a ticket to entry. But the thing that really makes businesses great is the leader. And to do that, you can learn how to manage emotionally, but also how to develop yourself as a person and as somebody who can influence with integrity. Absolutely. Influencing other people would also uh, run, you know, in parallel to emotional intelligence. How is that then um, also a skill that uh, people should learn uh, alongside everything else that you've just uh, mentioned there, Angela? How is in what, how would they go about doing it? How, how important is sort of emotional intelligence? Because all that you've mentioned um, encompasses emotional intelligence. So It's hugely important. Right. I would say it is one of the most important things. And it's something that I don't see out there very much um, as being provided by a lot of coaches. I, in fact, I see it very rarely. And to be frank, 
the coaching industry worries me a little bit because there's a lot of people who have gone off and done a coaching diploma or certificate or whatever the case may be, but I don't see the substance behind it. Um, and it's not just about mindset and rah, rah, you know, you've got to be in the right mindset. Absolutely. You have to be positive about the business and, and have the right mindset, but there's a hell of a lot more to running a business than just being in the right frame of mind. You have to have the emotional intelligence to be able to take some big decisions as well. Delegating, as we've spoken about before, is a very big example of that. And that takes a lot of emotional intelligence. But when you have the right skills in place, both in terms of the system so that you know how to do it, and you have the right coaching skills as a leader, then you find you can start doing it. If you don't have that and you have no clue how to manage people, your business will never thrive. And emotional intelligence is not just important for managing people. You have to influence the people who buy from you with integrity as well. You have to influence your family. Parenting is a leadership role. So this is not something you should be doing just because you've got a business. Every single person, and I actually think this is something that should be taught in schools, is emotional intelligence and resilience because it's really, really lacking. It's something that can be learned but it's something that must be learned, particularly if you want to be successful in a business. Absolutely. Now you might have a criteria as to what sort of women you want to work with, because some people are just doing it so that they have something that uh, distracts them while the kids are at school and other people really want to create, uh, you know, something they can will to the next generation. So what sort of um, you know, women, are you looking to, um, you know, impart with these uh, skills that you have learned within, um, you know, your time in business? Look, generally my, my clients tend to be 35 and above. It's a 35 to 55 age bracket, but of course, if you're younger or older, everybody's welcome and they have an established business. So they've already made sure that their business model works and that their product is viable, that it's selling, but they're at a point now where, I don't quite know what to do next. The business is working. Um, I have one client who is typical of one of my clients. She has two businesses and she contacted me because she said, I feel like I'm drowning. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm working, I'm working 16 hour days and I'm just not achieving any more. And it's at that point where when your stages of business growth that your business gets to the top of the peak of the stage and then you dip down into this valley of death. And that's where you need to change gears. It's like moving a racing car around. You need to change gears to get to the next level. And what happens is often they will get to the point, the peak of their business, and that's when it becomes too big to manage the way it is being managed. And they go through this valley of death. And that's where a lot of business owners give up. I've heard a lot of people at that point say, it's too hard. I just don't want to do this anymore. So my, my clients are the ones who understand that their business works but they need to do something next to overcome the overwhelm that they're feeling because a lot of them also say to me, I have too many priorities. I'm being pulled in a million different directions. And the biggest tip I can give viewers now is to make a very small set of the priorities, the ones you will focus on for 90 days. So no more than seven, maybe eight, but if you've got any more than that, it's too much because there will be other things that come up and distract you. And of course, the other thing, it's more about what you say no to and what you decide to say no to than what you agree to. Because that really is the power. And you'll find that it's actually a very difficult decision to say no to certain things. But if you can focus relentlessly on seven things in a balanced way, so across your business, in terms of your customers, the way you work and your people, you will get the results. Absolutely. Now, here's the thing. If you're watching the show right now, no matter how good you are at what you do, no matter how hard you work, you still need gonna, to, to take your business to the next level. And there's no elite athlete that has ever achieved excellence. Um, even people like Einstein, they had a mentor, even, um, you know, people like uh, Hussein Bolt, they have a coach that helps them uh, to go into elite status. Even Tony Robbins has a coach and people that he looks up to you know what i mean so you're going to need somebody who's going to help you to actually close that gap um that you might have um in your performance levels now you know and the people might be uh, watching this and saying okay this is well true and good now how do we get more of this or what's the best way that we can get a hold of you 
Well, you can go to my website. I am, I've just recorded a free, free hour of training, which talks about how to double your business, how to put some systems in place, and also how to 10x the exit value of your business. That's my gift to all of you for an hour. And if you go through that and you feel that there is value and you'd like to talk to me, I'm also giving away an hour of my own time to actually sit with you and work through some of the issues in your business and create a plan for you. Absolutely. I'm going to implore 24 of you to actually pick out an hour. So she's got a whole full day of busyness, um, you know, ahead of her. I mean, if your business is going to thrive in the long term, you really need to learn how to effectively either manage yourself and the people that are around you. And like what Angela has been talking about, you have to have a plan for the marketplace, for the workplace, and also for the people that are in and around you because each and every success stage depends on the people that are within that business. So if you're going to dedicate uh, any time to um, your business and growing it, you need to be building it, um, you know, with a business knowledge that she has said she is ready to offer for you to actually start growing your business. Now, Angela, somebody might just be sitting here and saying, okay, well, you've had the experience um, you know, you might know a thing or two, you've, you've done the, the education and you've built businesses and if they come across to you right now, what's like your go-to advice that you might just give to somebody who's maybe still struggling with their business, they're working longer hours and they're not really full, feeling fulfilled? Look, the biggest thing I think is to understand your business and to understand your market. So the first step is always to do some analysis around that, where your business is currently at, what your strengths and weaknesses are, and what the opportunities and threats are that you're facing. You also need to understand your business environment because it changes so rapidly these days. From there, you take your vision and you work out where you are now, and then you work out how to close the gap. But you can't work out what you have to do next until you know where you are now, and where you wanna be and what that difference is. So I work with companies, as I said, who are growing. And even if they don't have staff, I have a lot of women who are overwhelmed because they're on their own, but they don't know how, what do I do next? What do I do next? So to answer that question, as I said, you've got to work out where you are now and I can help you through that with the tools and then work on your vision. Now, some women actually come to me with a very clear vision of what they want for their business. Others, kind of know but they don't quite so sometimes i do have to work with clients to really refine that i like uh, i use jim collins's term big hairy audacious goal yeah so mine for example is help a million women it's indirectly and directly by the way not just clients although that would be lovely um and then to to, to, to close that gap and the way we close that gap because it can be really daunting to people is to break it down into 90 day chunks because how do you eat an elephant well you eat it one teaspoon at a time and by doing that and making it small and measurable it makes it much easier for people to 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 do but also helps them overcome the overwhelm absolutely as you can tell and as you can see the passion um in her voice her work is really dedicated to helping you create a business and a life that you actually absolutely love. And this will be by providing you with the tools, the resources, and also the coaching that you can, um, you know, utilize so you can become who you were actually meant to be and make an impact like the one she's about to make, um, you know, that she's dedicated to helping directly and indirectly 1 million women achieve their financial goal in 2030. Now, Angela, I would like to interview you in 2031 to see how far you have gone with this challenge and um, yeah, and, 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 and so that we can compare notes and see how that's gone. Would that be okay? You should probably do it before then, remember, because what gets tracked gets measured. So you probably need to do some progress reports, but yes, <laughs> I'd love to. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Great stuff.